this is kind of our new thing that we're trying with the whole conversations. We've been doing tech conversations, uh, tech questions every day at 6.30 or so. And today is something we wanted to try. So in the Discord, um, if you go in the Discord, and I actually have to change something here because last time in the Discord, it was not saying anything. So I might have to change it really quick. Um, in case you're wondering, in order to prevent um, music from going into the VODs, you have to turn off channel two. But I just turned it on for the desktop so that the Discord will be saved with the videos so that the YouTube videos will have it. So uh, for any reason that doesn't work, we'll, we'll do it again. But let's go ahead and try that. So if you want to join, we are in community conversations. I'm going to go on the stage, uh, starting the stage now in Discord. Um, so you can go join the stage if you want to come talk. Uh, and I'm going to post really quickly to, to community choice conversations and we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Uh, TV. Uh, so hello, hello, Twitch people. Hello. We, we do not have a really long time. We, we're not in a rush of any kind, but we are going to go watch some bluegrass tonight at a live pub. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, I did want to get a conversation started. Hopefully we can continue the conversation, you know, unofficially from the road once we get moving on our Friday night. Um, but let's let's go in and, and jump right in. Uh, latest changes to the OS API. Super late here. Good day. I'll, super torpedo. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to. I'll go take a look at that later. Um, thank you for the reminder, though. I do need to turn the chat off um, because we don't we we don't know what we're gonna get, <laughs> honestly. And some of our good friends have been, you know, recently banned on Twitch for reasons that are completely out of their control, and so I have to be really careful on that. Um, but let's let's go ahead and look in this. Um, in the discord room and if you go under streaming under the section community choice questions is something new we tried um i don't think mossy's here it's just too bad because mossy's the one who created the the topic but i'm just going to read it to you so the topic suggested that one by the way if you want to vote for a, a topic i uh, just need to go in there and decide what topic and we may change this. We might just make it so the community gets to pick whatever they want every night as opposed to having it always be tech topics. But the topic suggested for for tonight, uh, which was voted on last week actually, was learning to learn how our brains solve problems and, you know, the thoughts about like, you know, non, you know, counterintuitive ways of like lear learning how things come about and things like that. So that might be a fun thing to talk about. So I'm going to put the question out there to everybody, and um, we are recording, yes. And um, I, I'm going to put the question out to everybody out there. Um, yeah, everybody wants to know what's up with my room. This is just my normal room. It's a mess, and I got my laundry and my wife's art and everything. I don't, I don't, I don't pretend to. You know, I'm not Twit TV. I don't, I don't manage the perception of my room. This is my actual room. <laughs> Sorry for the dig there, but so so let's let's go ahead and um, take a look at this. Um, tell me, tell me. I'm just gonna throw it out to the chat. We don't have that many here, but for right now, let me just throw it out. What is it that makes it hard for you to learn? Like, what is your single biggest struggle when it comes to learning? Does anybody want to take a peek at that? Take a chance, chance at that. I mean, I have what I, I have as problems. People retaining learning. I'm going to turn the chat on because I feel like you're trustworthy right now. Uh, you are getting recorded, so please be respectful. Starting, just getting started in the learning process. Um, and uh, let's see. Move this. Oh, boy. Sorry. I told you this is live. So where to start? Uh, I'll learn and then I'll, I'll wash out and I learn new things. Yeah, that's mine. That's my problem. My problem with learning is that as everybody sees every day on when I do my live streams, I can't, 
I can't retain anything. It, you know, and they say repetition is the mother of learning in Russia, Pavtarenya, Matsuchenya, and all of that. But the brain is fluid and knowledge is fluid. So even, even if you could keep up with all the topics that are out there, you know, that you're going to forget it. And then this whole idea of full stack, I think is foolish because there's no way you can learn everything for full stack, including databases and network protocols and, and everything and be on top of it all. Um, learning is generally acquired through repetition, right? The biggest problem with learning is the person, the person can't convey what they're trying to teach in a way that is retainable for the person learning. I agree. Um, and some time ago, I posted to the Skillstack Twitter something that I want to pull up. So if you want to follow along, it's at twitter.com slash Skillstack. This is really old. I haven't updated it in literally a decade. Um, and if I remember right, though, at some point there was a there was a somebody posted something about learning and the problem with most learning happens seventy percent of learning retention comes from uh, you know the doing of the thing as opposed to hearing about how to do the thing uh, and I know learn with Leon I'm gonna put a plug in for learn with Leon who has talked a lot about these retention things um, mnemonic things are a thing you know association through some other that's how people do memorization contests by the way um so you know there there are ways to 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 retain things but more importantly than retaining things i think i think the whole learning thing is is it's not just retention it's it's application it's retention um and it's also the freeing your brain to teach itself things that you haven't even thought about yet you know, that's things that those things that come to you when you're in the shower or you're, you know, wherever you're, you know, you're gardening or you're doing the dishes or whatever, you know, it's those those good things that like pop in there. Um, you know, how do you make that happen? So Petrico says, yeah, I've tried learning Angular a couple of times and failed, but now I had to use it for a project. So you know it, right? And it boils down to interest. Oh, Jalopy, I love that point. I really do think that interest is the thing. If you're not interested in it, you don't tend to want to remember it, right? Well, I'm actually, raise your hand if you're horrible at remembering birthdays and dates and, and, and family member names. <laughs> I am so bad about that. And, you know, I've wondered about that for a long time. It's like, why can't I remember those things? And I believe the reason I can't is because I don't have any interest in it. It's not that I'm not interested in the people. It's because I know I can look it up on my phone. I'm like, why um, learn those kind of things, right? What was it? There's this apocryphal saying from Einstein or something about uh, the only thing I need to know is how to get to the library. That's the only thing you need to memorize because you can just look everything up, right? A Viking says, I just like doing the same things in different languages and not advancing past certain points. Interesting. Yeah, Jalopy says, this is why I have a calendar. Uh, I'll probably remember obscure APIs or status codes. Yeah. Never memorize something you can look up. Is that Einstein or is that just yet another quote attributed to Einstein? So I actually found the, the post. It's in, it's in uh, Skillstack. I'll put it in, the, I'll put it in the, the chat here if you want to see it. Um, but the, the name, I don't have a link to anything other than the, the picture of it. Uh, which I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and, and bring that in for a second here. Um, so the name is the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. And I don't know how scientific this is, but you know, somebody on the internet sent it to me and I read it. I thought it was interesting. Um, but it gets into this, this idea of, of, you know, that most of the stuff that we learn, we forget right away. And, and some of it, you know, goes on longer. Um, so, you know, what do, what do you do there? I think, I think it's the repetition and the doing the things over that you want to do. Uh, I use this also. I, it's something I noticed while I was, when I was teaching. Oh, I'll, I'm going to read this comment first. Uh, you're a month into a new job doing tickets, asking questions even if it's stupid, viewing the product from multiple angles, looking at the database, playing with the front end, printing to standard out makes just to understand the workflow. Yeah, Patrick says, got to learn so much that the 30% uh, 
cost is sufficient, right? So, um, man, man, manic mod of motive says, I'd like to hear your opinion on execution plans in tech. How do you document how different teams work together, uh, after they're creating upon it? And that's a, a great question as well. Um, it's not related to the learning topic right now, but I, that's a great question. And it's particularly because, uh, we were just talking about that while I was doing my work. Just once again, I want to mention that every, every day, pretty much I do some portion of my day job on Twitch, uh, but I don't, I don't put that on YouTube. Um, so yeah, the Ebbinghaus curve, this is something I noticed. I wanted to share a little story. So when I started Skillstack, um, you know, I, I used to call it a learning lab for myself as well as everybody else, because we just got together and learned stuff and had fun doing it and pumped the dopamine up as much as we could without, you know, artificial stimulants. Cheers. Mm. But, you know, uh, something I noticed both at church and, um, with these group of mostly kids that you can, you, if you sit them down in a room for longer than 45 minutes, nothing was going to happen. There were no learning happening. Spaced repetition as well as letting yourself get into diffuse mode. Yeah, absolutely. Diffuse mode as opposed to focus mode sometimes lets you subconscious. Is that what it's called? It's called diffuse mode. I like that. I like that. That's when you're in the shower or when you're not thinking about it, right? I just had that happen, actually. I just had that happen. I was in you know, brushing my teeth and getting all sexy for a night on the town on Friday night. That's <laughs> uh, pretty hard. And, um, and anyway, I, I just had these random thoughts come in my head while I was, while I was, you know, uh, brushing my teeth that really kind of were breakthroughs and things that I've been thinking about before on other, on other areas. So I guess that has a name. So, so learn with Leon says it's diffuse mode. Um, and the space repetition, I think is, is super duper important, um, as opposed to like cramming for something. And I think there's pretty good science on that particular thing. Uh, singing in the shower. Absolutely. Singing in the shower is amazing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I realize this your stream is still running. Uh, it doesn't, that hasn't happened. It didn't, that didn't happen. Did that happen? Was my stream still running? Don't scare me. Um, uh, because the space repetition, yeah, for sure. And because, you know, you, you had, it's still fresh and then you come back in and you, you try it out a little bit the next day or next morning. Um, when I did my yoga training, uh, I know it's hard to tell right now, but I, I actually did get certified as a yoga instructor. It took, you know, 30 days of training. And we did, I did the like intense 30 day block thing. It's with my wife at a separate time. And there were other people that were trying to do that, like, one w weekend every two weeks and I just could not get my head around doing that because it was too big of a gap. So if you're going to do space repetition, I think there's, you want to fall within that area of retention so that you, you have a little bit more to go on when you try it next week or the week after that. Um, I, I I'm going to recount a, a couple, um, um, discoveries though with this, with these mostly kids, as I said, as I was trying to help them learn, and uh, it was pretty, pretty stark contrast. So uh, Barbara Oakley, yes, yes, yes. The Coursera on it, learning how to learn from Barbara Oakley, absolutely, highly recommended. I haven't gone through the whole thing. I started it. I want to go finish it myself. Um, is that open source, by the way? Because I would love to, to do it on stream. I would love to like go through the whole course and just talk about it with everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Flashcards are absolutely great. I actually started a business in college called Sterling Scholasticades where I produced flashcards on different topics and sold them in the bookstore. Uh, most notably, the Russian roots uh, from my uh, Dr. Jarvis, who's a, my Russian professor, one of them. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of flashcards uh, for that type of thing, right? Um, yeah, and I got to tell you, they worked, man. And, and I thoroughly memorize the Russian roots, which just make the Russian language so much easier. Uh, in the future, I have done yoga quite a bit, actually, and I've talked about yoga on stream. Um, I may bring it up again. I've, I've started doing yoga again. I just, I just don't do it on stream. I was doing it on stream for a while. Um, open source, the Coursera thing. I would rather, uh, I mean, I might reach out to Barbara and see if she would be, be okay with us just discussing it or even having her on as a guest. I would love to talk to her. Um, 
anybody who wants to actually talk, uh, I'm sorry if I missed you. Please make sure you raise your hand in the Discord so I can bring you in and you can actually comment on the radio show, if that's what we're going to call this, um, about these things. So, so the observations I wanted to make were, one, um, some kids, and I say kids because they were younger than me, um, only had an hour a week. And so they would, that was their only hour, by the way, right? And I would tell them at the point blank at the beginning, uh, uh, yeah, at the very, very beginning of, before I even did anything with them, I tell you, you know, this is the best way for you to learn is for you to space repetition, do, you know, half an hour, an hour a day of these things and practice what you've done and redo it, you know, code the same exercise again and try to do it again. And I, I'm a big fan of that type of learning, particularly if it's a, a mini project that's kind of fun. And we would do things like, you know, animate nine cats, uh, you know, using text or whatever. I mean, we had a, a bunch of silly, deliberately silly, um, fun little projects for them to keep trying so that it would stick. And, um, and those that did it, made advances those that didn't it was almost like you could see the graph the graph would go up you know they would come that week and then it would drop and then they would come back that week and it would drop again and it would come back up and, and you know if they were lucky the total net gain in their learning would outweigh what they forgot from the last week but to tell you the truth most of them didn't and i told them point blank sometimes i would go straight to the parents and the children and i would say you know you know, you're, you're not getting your maximum value out of this because you are not doing anything between sessions at all. Nothing. They just want to sit down and, and, and be taught, you know? And I think anybody who knows me knows that that's not the type of learning I believe in. Um, first of all, I think you should be driving your own learning period. And, and anybody else in the room to help you learn is at most a facilitator or a mentor. Uh, but people, people want to learn by consuming. They want to buy exercise equipment and make it help, have them make them healthy. They don't want to use it. They just want to buy it and have it make them healthy. They want to buy tech books. How many, how many of you have a tech book that has never been cracked open, but you, it makes you feel comfortable having it in your bookshelf? <laughs> I, I must have spent hundreds of dollars on tech books that I never once even read any of it. <laughs> How many, how many of you've bought, bought like, <laughs> how many, how many, I know, how, how many of you've done this? It's like, like, oh, I really need to learn that, right? It's the, it's the ambition that you have, and that's not bad. But I mean, how, how many of you actually, like, you know, even sign up? People, this is expensive. People sign up for Coursera stuff, and they never do the courses. And the, the people on Coursera, they sit back and they're like, yeah, that's fine with me. They, they do Coursera or whatever, you know, there's like a ton of them and, and they go out and they, they pay all the money or they do like me, like they sign up to certify and they're like, Oh, I don't have time. I can't get to it. So I think we're very ambitious when we, when we start out, but, but I think it's just like with anything, you know, with exercise or anything, you need to like do it a little bit of it every day, a little bit of it every day. I think the problem is, is that we, we get behind and then we overdo it. Right. Just like with anything, and then we're puking if you're if you're exercising, and now you're puking on the street, and you don't ever want to do that again. But if you were to take off a little bit more, a little bit less of it, thirty minutes a day, twenty minutes a day, and create a habit, obviously, um, that repetition is going to help you um, uh, do better. And and I know this for a fact because I observe this. You can't if you can't finish courses, it's not my style. Yes, projects are projects are by far my style as well. I create a project or two or 10 that I want to do that, that, that are in the vein of the thing I need to learn. And then I have no problem doing it. In fact, I have the opposite problem. I, have the, I, I don't want to do anything else while I'm doing that because it's like, I'm totally focused on it. Um, yeah. But if you can just do like 10 or 20 minutes a day, I think finding something that you want to do. I used to, um, this is kind of a, a regular thing that I would say all the time at skill stack. Uh, but when it comes to learning, I mean, we won't talk about how to identify what you should learn. That's a different topic. Um, but the there are two types of learning. There's the comprehensive and then there's the gap fill stuff, right? I mean, there's a, the comprehensive gap fill stuff, sorry, and the project stuff. 
The project stuff is fun and you get to reward yourself with, oh, I'm going to make this project because I want to, but it may not use like even 10% of the language that you're trying to learn or something. And then you still have to find other projects that overlap that thing. And I continue to say that the number one task here is to, 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 to know what you don't know. And I, if I have my way someday, I would really like to generate, you know, the Occam's credential system, which would say, here's all the things that you should know if you want to do back in engineering and not even tell you where to do it and how to do it. But that's so that you could go there and you could actually look at it and, and, and know what you what you don't know. That's half the battle. Uh, there's been something that's been people a lot more productive when deadlines are approaching. So more artificial deadlines theoretically can make it more productive. Yeah, the stress of a deadline, for some people that works. Um, most of our read, there are not too many beginners centric for my test. Yes. And that's another thing about about learning. I would I would rather, you know, pair program with somebody who's junior or senior and and work on something together way more than I would like to sit in a class someplace. Um, I just, I don't, I don't like it. And I, I personally, I don't even think it's the natural way to learn. And that gets into the whole thing with, uh, with, you know, Ken Robinson and, and Paulo Freire and, you know, the natural, nat natural ways to learn what we know about learning. Um, another comment from Stockmeister. If I can't find a practical use for it, I will forget it. Absolutely. I agree. I learned math, but then I finished school and never looked back. Yeah, I took 300 level calculus and got A's and all of it. Do I remember? Could I do a derivative now? No. Uh, but as long as I don't need it in complex. Yeah. And then you, you, you set it aside, right? And then you get embarrassed when you can't do it because you're live streaming. And you're like, wait, you don't know whatever this is? I'm like, no, I don't remember it. Um, the project approach, use a small percentage of the language is probably, yeah. But, and then you, so I think the, the, the target thing and I used to say this, I was like, okay, set for yourself a plan for the comprehensive stuff, whether it's a book or a course or Coursera or whatever, right? It's not as fun, but that's going to take more willpower, right? Because you're going to have to, you know, go through the A plus book or whatever, right? And it's not fun at all. But you know that you're going to be filling gaps while you look at those things. You don't even need to do this stuff in the book. You you just need to be aware that there's something in the book that you're not putting in your project, right? And then when you when you really run out of energy and you're like, man, I just want to relax. And instead of reaching for Dota or, you know, <laughs> a beer or something, you could do have some fun and then you get to work on the project that you want to do as kind of a reward. And then hopefully that'll that'll help your your time um, you know, work out there. Um uh, some people need pressure. Some people don't. The, everyone's different. That's part of the process is figuring out how you work best. Um, and you want to learn about bioengineering, but your discipline isn't high enough. So I'm going to force myself to learn it in a top university. Yeah. I mean, one one way to force yourself to do something, for, it depends on what motivates you, right? One, of the, <laughs> I'm going to confess here. One of the things that motivates me is wasted money. So I'm a big miser when it comes to my money. I mean, I spend it like crazy when it comes to other things, but but when it comes to feeling like I'm wasting money, like for example, I bought I bought the last year I bought the certificates uh, tests for Kubernetes, and I did. I started out really aggressively to study and practice for it, and life just kind of happened. Not to mention the fact that I'm overly ambitious, like we all are. And, and I, you know, I'm not ready to take the test, so I'm looking for a postponement on it. But I tell you what, signing up to do that or like signing up for a 5k, right? Paying the money. Um, you know, some people can just blow it off that for me, that's a motivator. Like if I, if I commit to something, if I say I'm going to run this marathon in five years or whatever, then it gives me a goal. I know I'm going to have to do it. I've heard other people say that you don't even need to do that. You can just tell people about it. Regret, right? Not knowing how hard it's held, but regretting it will be worse. Yes. So, you know, I think I think some people actually use accountability um, partners, you know, people that they tell about what they want to do and they use the sort of implied shame of not doing what they said. Of course, I don't care if I don't, if I don't do it. That doesn't motivate me. It's like, oh, I didn't do it. Oh, well. You know, um, but, but yeah, it's, it's a very personal thing. 
But I, I think, I think interest in the topic is the most important thing of all. I, I hear people all the time saying, I want to get into tech. I just hate it. I'm like, well, why are you getting into tech? Because well, the money's good. I'm like, well, you're going to be torturing yourself all day. Why would you do that? Well, the money's good. You said that. <laughs> give, give someone a hundred dollars and tell them to keep it if you don't do it. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. It just depends on what motivates you. Um, I, you know, it's it's silly too, but sometimes giving yourself a reward, like I don't know, a nice brandy, or you know, something fun that you're gonna do. And uh, the other thing too is I have to have the stress out of the equation. If it's too stressful, if it's too stressful, I'll just fritz out and not do it. It has to be like a the perfect amount of stress. <laughs> If it's if it's too much stress, I'll just fritz out and not do it. If it's not enough stress, I'm drinking one of my smoothies. I'm drinking one of my smoothies without the smoothie. <laughs> it's just the brandy. It's nice though. It's not too much. I've been I've been going easier on the brandy, especially since I got to drive tonight. I'm going to be driving to the to the bluegrass. So um, so yeah, I I think those are all the great ways to learn. I I. One of the things that triggered this conversation, and I don't see Mossy here today, but um, the Goldilocks of stress, <laughs> exactly. I, I think one of the things that motivated me the most um, and continues to motivate me is the more balance I get, um, the more I'm able to leave things and come back to them and have them feel fresh, if, they, if you follow what I'm saying. So... You know, if you, if you're coding all the time or you're blah, 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 you know, and you know, you, you kind of get sick of it. I mean, maybe not. Sometimes you get so obsessed. I've been there. I've, I've coded for 13 hours and people have to tell me you need to go outside. I'm like, you're absolutely right. I don't want to though. But, but burnout is a real thing. So if you step away from it, not only is your brain going to work on the problem, but you're going to get refreshed. And so if you're going to go watch, you're going to put, put your earplugs in and watch race cars on the drag strip. And then you're going to come back and take a break, whatever you do to relax. I'm, I'm picking on jalopy. So, um, but you know, it's like whatever you do, I, I, there are certain escape activities that are less conducive to learning than others. <laughs> I mean, there has, there has been at least one occasion where I, I drank, you know, too much brandy or something. I'm not an alcoholic. Don't get worried. People tease me all the time. I know. But that's, so that's what an alcoholic would say. Um, but I think I th I think that there are some things that people do that, you know, they come back more exhausted. But at least it's something different. I, like, for example, I told you this before. When I was a river guide, I I thought that I wanted to be a river guide forever when I started. I was in, you know, September... I'm sorry, not September. I was in, I was in Utah, and I trained in Moab in May. It was freezing cold. They actually told the stories about other guys dying from hypothermia during the training because they didn't make it through, and there was high water and everything. And you know, we went through all the training, and then they shipped me up to Salmon, Idaho, and I got to do all of that. It was fantastic. And I was completely away from technology. I, absolutely no contact with technology for like four months from, from I would say May or June to august and by the beginning of august end of july i was chomping at the bit to get home in front of a computer i i mean i would i would sit there in the middle of the most pristine gorgeous you know montana idaho border beauty you could possibly see if you get a chance to go on the salmon idaho i strongly regret i mean <laughs> encourage you to go there i regret leaving it to some degree and, and I would see it. I'm going to read this. This is a great comment. I'll be back to it. And I would see all this great beauty. And all I could think about was how fast I could get back to the computer lab. Because my brain was already cycling on all these things. And my wife has noticed this about me. That I, that during, when there's good outdoor weather and there's outside. So I, I'm prone to do a lot of things outdoors. And then when it gets cold, I become kind of a computer hermit. And I just plop myself in front of the computer and blimp out and write lots of code. Uh, and get stressed out, it's not good for you. Now, optimally, I think it would be a, a combination of those things. 
that you would be able to get away from it and then come back to it. <laughs> no matter what you're going to do, you're going to die. The more you chase happiness, the less happy you'll be. The more you chase fulfilled life, the less fulfilled you'll be. Interesting. Yeah, I think I think chasing it is 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 the key in that, right? Um, you know, I think if you learn to accept where you are, a lot of times you'll be more happy. Sockmeister has a, a big qu comment here. I stress myself really much because I have a really hard time breaking stuff down. Uh, I only see the full picture uh, or the end, and it will overwhelm me. Yo, I can under I can relate to that. It is it is like looking out in my garden, and I need to clean it up. But when I realize the amount of stuff that needs to be done, I just start a video game and start on Netflix. <laughs> I absolutely understand that. I just start picking a single three up and get started. It's like, I have so much to do, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> I, I have done that so many times. My wife and I talk about that all the time. I have so much to do that I'll do that I'm going to do nothing instead. The actual opposite is what you should do. You have so much to do, so you should at least do a little. But because there's such a mountain of things to do, you're like, screw it, I'm not going to do anything. And it just gets worse, right? The deadline to push me over the finish line, yeah. I mean, this is, a lot of this is just human nature, so I think it's just understanding uh, that this is it and setting up traps for ourselves to, to help us out. We, I have talked about morning rob versus night rob, too. You have this. Does anybody have this? There's a whole, whole stand-up comic, I don't remember who, uh, who has a whole bit about this, about nighttime Rob versus, you know, daytime Rob. <laughs> nighttime Rob's like, that's daytime Rob's problem. <laughs> Woohoo, let's go party. You know, <laughs> thank you for this stuff. You know, it's like, but what, whatever you can do to kind of like, because here's the deal. Morning Rob is not fun and he's overly ambitious and he's going to do things that are going to cause him to stress out and be, and be more likely to turn into an extreme nighttime rob. So balance is really related to learning because you're not going to learn anything if you're all burned out, you know, and if you don't want to do anything. So, you know, it's strange is that how well computer game, I, there's a guy, not Ted Dintersmith, there's a different guy. Ted Dintersmith is amazing, by the way. Ted Dintersmith, if you could follow him, he was, he's actually an executive uh, who got interested in education and trying to reform the education system by informing the whole traditional education system with lessons learned from, from the business world. And one of those lessons is that computer game manufacturers know how to educate. And, and you think, think about that for a second. When's the last time you did a tutorial for a video game. You wanted to get into the video game, I mean, like Dota or League or whatever, right? Uh, or even Overwatch or TF2. I remember TF2 has one. And people have no patience for the tutorial. They're like, I want to get through this. I'm going to play this game. I'm going to play this game through failing and then I'm going to learn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what ends up happening was video game manufacturers became some of the top experts in education through experiential learning because if they didn't, the game wouldn't sell because nobody could play it. And they, they, they had to make it either really easy or they had to make it really intuitive. So they had to find all of these ways, very creative ways to educate you while you're playing the game or during some form of the game that's more fun than just sitting there in front of a video. And... I thought that was really interesting because, you know, when there's a necessity, specifically a financial necessity for, for you to, to help somebody else learn something really quickly and soundly and feel satisfied in learning it, you know, they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. And now, you know, you got GitHub education out there. You got Amazon doing things and making some courses for free because why? Because there's money involved. They're, they got to have the money to, they got to have the people to run the software. Otherwise they can't sell the software. So, so learning is driven by different needs. Um, if you're interested in the topic of learning in general, I, I'll make a couple of recommendations to you here. Um, before we wrap up, we're, we're getting close to the end here. 
I'm going to try, I'm really trying hard to keep it under, uh, you know, 40, 40 minutes ish so that people can try to consume these in the car or whatever they're doing during the day if they want to just have a conversation. Um, and so let me give you a couple, a couple of, of people uh, to consider reading if you want to study this stuff. So the first, the first one was one that, that somebody already mentioned, um, Barbara, uh, I forget her last name, uh, who has a course on Coursera about learning to learn. It's, it's become rather famous at this point. Um, and Barbara Rooney, I think it is, right? Barbara Oakley, that's right. And um, this is the book. Uh, there's a Coursera on it as well. I've heard great things. I haven't been through it fully myself. Um, as I said, I'm not a Coursera person, but um, I think it would be fun for for you to give a shot, give it a try. Uh, but if but, but but I've been more influenced by a few other people. Uh, learn with Leon. I I do think it's important. I, I've always felt that learning to learn is is really important. I call it learning like a hacker. Um, hackers are they the reason they go toward hacking is because they're inquisitive and they're trying to figure out how to use things in non traditional ways and are thinking outside the box and all that. And all of those characteristics are perfect for learning. And they also make you a great operations person too. Uh, but if you don't know how to learn, how can you learn? I know it's that infinite loop, right? Um, you know, that's a problem. I was like, I remember when I first did this, like, well, tell me how to learn, tell me how to learn how to learn. And I'm like, Oh no, what do we do? <laughs> because, you know, sit here and listen to me and you know, break all your rules for learning on the first time. Um, but let me let me talk to you. Um, as an adult making career change, of course, Sarah, of course, was invaluable. Yeah, I, I want it. I really want people to break out of the traditional education. And I, I'm not going to do the whole rant tonight. It's in the boost. It's usually the first one, day or two. I've done three boosts, boosts for three years now. And so... At the beginning of the boost, I usually always do a learning to learn rant or two, and I go through all this stuff. So I'm just going to hit the high points right now. So um, one of them is just throw out everything you know about education and learning. Um, uh, are too many dumb, overgeneralized prescriptions? Yeah, there definitely is a lot of that. Um, my it, it is really doesn't take. Um, I and I talk about this in the boost at the beginning. Personally, and I, I feel like I, I feel like this is bias. My experience has been that learning comes naturally to you from the time you're a child. And and the other one of the pretty people I want to talk to you about, uh, Sir Ken Robinson. I cannot over recommend his videos. He's now passed, but he's got a TED talk and um, and a book um, out of their minds. Um, he's extremely entertaining. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not recommending that Coursera course. I'm recommending Barbara to you, right? So if you want to hear somebody, I haven't actually gone through it, so I can't really say, um, but I have read, uh, Sir Ken's book. And the thing I like about Sir Ken is that Ken, first of all, I believe he was knighted for his, uh, um, sort of research and study he did over 10 years to help improve the very broken British education system. Um, and it's, it's absolutely fascinating what he talks um, and how to learn Coursera is somewhat ironic. I know that's why, I mean, the whole Coursera thing doesn't appeal to me because it's a course. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm going to go pay for a course. I'm going to sit there and have somebody put something in my head. Right. So the first thing that I want to say about Ken is um, Sir Ken has pretty much just obliterated the the notion of creativity uh, and literally says that we, quote, beat creativity out of our children. And I personally would go further to say that we beat the desire for learning and education out of our children uh, from the time they're very young. And there's another author who agrees uh, from some time ago, Paulo Freire, who's very controversial author, um, but pretty much standard canon, uh, misogynistic. He had a lot of problems with his general personality, but but his ideas about independent learning and and the pedagogy of the oppressed and and how to 
you know, specifically, he was motivated by helping people throw off their oppressors. But in the process, he realized that we need to help people examine how people learn things. And that part of it, it's like a tiny piece of his body of work has become the basis for a lot of, um, um, of you know, intellectual uh, academic pursuits related to education because he basically said you can't just banker style somebody open their head up and pour this information in and close it and say sit down shut up and don't talk unless you're spoken to this whole entire thing is is oppression and and it's consistent with what sir ken says that you know we beat out the this this with this we have this adversarial idea about education and learning between you know the teacher, which I hate that word, and the teach e, you know the student, and you, know, you sit there. I'm going to tell you what you're going to learn, and we don't encourage critical thinking or any of those things. This is the reason that, by far, one of my top five favorite uh, movies of all time, despite the fact that it's set in a in a boys' school and is um, you know is is it's it's set in a time when there were no women in the equation, which is really sad. There are some, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's in that sense, it's very sad, but, but dead poet society, uh, even thinking about this show makes me want come very close to tears, um, for lots and lots and lots and lots of reasons. Um, dead poet society is by far the most important movie I've ever seen related to my life path. Um, and, and I, uh, carpe diem. Yeah, I can't even say it. You're going to get me emotional. Um, that there is no greater fictional hero to me than John Keating as portrayed by Robin Williams in Dead Poets Society, um, based on the things that I personally value. And there's a, there's a scene in this show where, God, look at how old Robert Sean Leonard is. Look at how old he is. I can't believe it. Oh my God, I'm an old man. Um, And Ethan Hawke, you know, people forget Ethan Hawke was even in this movie. Um, So, I mean, I I strongly encourage you if you want to watch it, make sure you bring a lot of hankies and you you watch it with a loved one and you can just sob on their shoulder. Um, It's a good sob though. You know, I think Aristotle said tragedy is the best form of, of, um, of, 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 of art. And I agree. Uh, it is, it'll absolutely rip you to shreds, and, but hopefully it will do so in a way that will make you rethink, um, how people learn and why they learn and what motivates them and the danger of dogma and just fire you up to take on, uh, the world. And if you want another one, if you want another one, a very big tearjerker, that's also free, uh, you can go on YouTube and and I will end with this one. Um, you can go on YouTube and you can watch the Internet's Own Boy. And specifically, what I, what I want to point out about this one, the Internet's Own Boy, this full story of Aaron Schwartz, this is free. Um, what I specifically want to point out about this, this is also an extremely sad documentary. This is a documentary Aaron Schwartz invented Reddit and 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 uh, Wikipedia ten years before they made it, and and uh, assisted Lawrence Lessing in a you know a Harvard law professor to create the Creative Commons license when he was fifteen. Um, and he was also kind of a jerk, <laughs> but the reason it got killed. Uh, don't no spoilers, but I want you to uh, if you if you I'm not going to tell you. You need to watch it. All right. Uh, I dedicate every boost to the memory of Aaron Schwartz. And it's another thing that I can't watch without getting all weepy. Um, Aaron Schwartz is uh, a perfect example of our system failing a natural born learner and facilitator. And it's, it is a mystery. It's kind of, I, I'm, I'm, look, don't give it away. And the thing about it is it's true. <laughs> it's it's not like Dead Poets Society, right? It's it actually happened. And so 
if you watch this movie though, and you can't blame me, you're going to be very sad. You may it may change your life forever. Um, it certainly has mine, because I don't ever want to fail an Aaron the way that he put himself out there. And the reason I thought of Aaron immediately when I talk about this, and I always talk about this at the beginning of the boost, is because of his behavior when he was a kid. And I will spoil this a little bit for you. So when he was a kid, he was obsessed. Website, the info.org wins a school competition hosted by the Cambridge-based web design firm. Macintosh in like a cardboard box, like that. Now it's pressed, now you press the click button. This is him. There. Now okay, it's that's all I could do without getting shut down by YouTube. So I can't do much more of that. This is going to be a YouTube video. This is him as a kid helping all his brothers out and all of his friends. He would set up entire classrooms for them. And he had more fun facilitating them learning things than his own learning because he loved learning so much naturally. He just, he just, he naturally loved it. And, you know, Ken says that we beat this out of our kids, like literally, and through sticking him in, it, actually, Paula Freire says it actually starts way before school. It starts in our, in, in, by, in our parents. The parents say, sit down and be quiet. They don't encourage their kids to, to, even when they're young, to challenge. And the Dead Poets Society thing is, you know, free thinkers at 16. I'm going to show you that quote. I can, it's probably just long enough for me to do without getting in trouble. Uh, and then we're, we're going to go. Uh, uh, is it 14 or 16? I never pegged you as a... Here we go. <laughs> Show me the hearts unfettered by foolish dreams. I'll show you a happy man. But only in their dreams can men be truly free. It was always thus, and always thus to so be. <laughs> Tennyson? No. Keating. <laughs> oh, I missed it. Right before that, he goes, he goes, <laughs> free think, because it's just at 15. And he goes, funny, I never, I never pegged you as a cynic. <laughs> And then he gives him the quote. And he ends up being one of his best friends. I'm going to, it's kind of a spoiler, but he ends up being one of his best friends. It's just really great. The, the, the thing I love about this is because Robert Williams is just on par. I mean, he's just the total, you know, like renegade. And he's in this like, you know, really dogmatic boy school. And it's just fantastic. Um, there's actually a, a, a female version of this. Um, the one with Julia Roberts in it, which is really good. Um, I don't remember the name of it though. Does anybody remember the name of it? I watched that once with my wife and I was blown away, but it was very similar to this. It was, uh, so yeah, there's, if you haven't, if you, if you, it might, especially if you've, if you've aged a little bit, right. Uh, it wasn't Aaron Brockovich. No, no, that was not the one. So, so there we go. That's, that's some ideas, some things you can do. Hopefully you'll find motivation to learn, uh, which we've all agreed is, is the hardest part. Right. And that's where the project based learning comes from. That's where the, the, you know, the daily smaller doses of of the stuff that's not as fun, the flashcardy kind of stuff, the repetition um, and the constant seeking um, of, you know, examples of to emulate. And I think that's another part of human nature. When I think about Aaron Schwartz and Paul Ferry and, and these these people, I'm immediately motivated and I. I, I want to be better. In fact, just just now, I I'm I'm already thinking about you know ways I can be more structured in in what I've been doing and how we can encourage dialogue because I think dialogue is one of the most entertaining forms of learning. Um, I mean, the amount of things that you can learn just just at a table, talking to your friends or at a pub, just shooting the breeze about the latest stuff that you just read or you know, the, 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 the thing you just saw on the internet that can kick off a conversation about something else that's more, more intense or serious. Just this dialogue that we're having right now is, is one of the ways that I hope, um, to, to encourage people to, uh, you know, to get out and of their brain and, and, you know, and I'll, I'll drink and play Dota for three hours too. I'm not perfect. I'm still struggling with the same thing, but, but, um, speaking of drinking, we need to, 
we need to go to see the band and go watch some good bluegrass. Uh, but all of those things, just a reminder that they, they free up your brain um, to be able to get back to the things that are, that you might find to be more important that you need to, to focus on learning. Um, and I, I'm going to say something that gets me in trouble a lot, but I believe the purpose of life is learning uh, above all the other ones. All the other ones, the reduction of suffering, the getting through with a gold star in heaven, all those other reasons. I personally believe that all of those other belief systems, um, ultimately, and I've been taken to task. Some people don't believe this, but I, I personally believe that the reason, if there is one, that we're here is to read. Uh, is to read and learn and grow and and end this life with, you know, as much knowledge and intellectual capital and experience as we possibly can. I don't know what happens after we die. We don't need to make this religious. Um, I think it's a great mystery. Um, I happen to believe something does happen. I just don't know what it is. Um, and I don't want to, you know, put down anybody else's belief at this moment. But the, the point is, is if you are to be X your way through life, you read, you know, you write about it, you explore, and then, you know, you, you experience those things and share them. I, to me, that is the one like solid truth of human existence because we are always with each other. We cannot escape one another. We are always with each other. We are always going to be communicating. We're always going to be learning and we're always going to be progressing. And however you define that, right? But I do honestly believe that that, that is the purpose of life and, and that we should never stop. Now, does that mean that I'm going to be reading a book all day, every day? No. Uh, you know, but, but you'd be surprised how much you can learn from, from good fiction, like, you know, the Orville or Star Trek or, you know, any, any number of other things as well. Harry Potter is full of like really amazing lessons in there, particularly the the episode where Hogwarts gets taken over. That, that, that is my favorite of all of them because that's JK Rowling sharing with us her personal experiences with the educational system and its failures. And she's, she's put all of that into her fiction, which is just amazing. Um, and so I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to leave you with some stuff you can go look at and read about and hopefully find motivation to, to, to do more with. Um, and hopefully, you know, maybe, maybe the, some ideas will come to you when you're, you're not thinking. I think that's another thing too, is to give yourself time to, to, to not do anything. So stuff can enter your brain or meditate, you know, and uh, those kind of things too. So, um, it's fun talking about, it. I can talk about it all night, but I want to go hear some bluegrass. So, I'm going to close off the stream and I'll be right back and I'll be putting my rig together and getting in the car and driving to the pub. And you can watch all of that if you want to join me. Um, and we may continue this conversation from the pub. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> talk to you soon. Oh, ready. And where's my stop?